Let's take a look at a data sufficiency question which on the face of it just seems to be an averages or a statistics based question. There are some words clearly appearing on this question. There's the word average appearing here. There's another word range that appears here. And this seems to be just an average or a statistical measure based question. However, if we can bring in the concept of sequences and combine it with averages, then we have a super quick solution available to us. So that's what I'll show you in this video. So when we see a question like this, there are some clues that we cannot afford to miss. One of them is out here. We are talking of n consecutive multiples of 3. The moment we talk of consecutive multiples of 3, we are looking at a sequence wherein each subsequent term is 3 more than the next. And this kind of a sequence obviously is an arithmetic progression. I have covered six types of sequences in another video. In case you haven't seen it, the link is given in the description below. So arithmetic progression is the most commonly asked sequence on GMAT. And the moment we are able to pick up the connection of a question with the concept of arithmetic progression, we usually have very, very quick solutions available. So out here, the moment we see that we are talking of such a sequence, the first thing that we know is that in this sequence, this is obviously we are assuming it's arranged in ascending order. The average which is given to us is right in the middle because that's one of the basic properties of every arithmetic progression that the average is nothing but the middle term. However, we don't really know where the middle term is in this case because we don't even know the number. The n value is also missing out here. Therefore, we can make use of a second very powerful property of arithmetic progressions which is that the average of any AP is nothing but the average of its first and last terms. Now the question is asking us the least, which means the question is asking us to work out the lowest value of the AP. Statement number one is giving us the highest value of the AP, which is 36. And from the data, we already have the average given as 27. So by making use of this property, we get, assuming that this value is x because it is missing, first term plus last term divided by 2 is equal to the average. And clearly we can see that in one step, we'll be able to work out the value of x. There is no need to work it out because this is not a math problem. It's a data sufficiency question. We just need to conclude whether we have enough information or not. And clearly we have enough information to derive x, which is nothing but the least value. And that is exactly what the question is. Hence, statement one alone is sufficient to answer the question. Now let's move to statement two alone. Statement two alone tells us that the range of these multiples, which means the range of this sequence is 18. Range is nothing but highest minus lowest, which also means that the highest term in this sequence is 18 more the range value 18 more than the lowest term. So if we assume the lowest as x, the highest value as per statement 2 has to be x plus 18. And once again, we make use of the same concept that the average of the sequence is nothing but the average of its first and last terms. Therefore, x This is the equation that we get first term plus last term divided by 2 is the average. Clearly, we can work out x. Once we work out x, we know the least term and hence we are able to answer the question. Therefore, statement 2 alone is also sufficient to answer the question. Because each statement independently gives us an answer, we mark the fourth option on GMAT. I have done a video covering all six sequence types asked on GMAT and I've also done separate videos such as this one giving one example of each of these six sequences. The links to all of these are given in the description below. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. That way you'll be notified every time we upload new videos.